don't know me, I work for the Pew Internet Project, which is a nonprofit research organization based in Washington, D.C. Um, we study the social impact of the internet, and we've been doing that for 10 years. I think the best way to describe my job is actually that I'm an internet geologist, um, and that means that I study patterns in the internet landscape. Mm -hmm. And there's a key distinction. A geologist doesn't have an opinion on the rocks that she studies. She doesn't judge the rocks. And in that way, I'm the same. I actually don't say that one technology is better than another. I don't say that one outcome is better than another. Um, but what I do provide is data for you to make those judgments for yourself. What I'm going to do today is provide um, a bit of a few data points. And actually, if we could get my first slide, just to get away from my giant face, for example. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, a really good reason to have slides today. Um, and uh, so all of my data sets and reports are available for free on pewinternet.org. And I invite you also to join the conversation on the blog at patients.net. And I'm almost dangerously social on Twitter, so please join the conversation. If you want to start an argument, then reach me on Twitter. Um, so starting with the data points that I have today, um, again, looking at um, just the United States, we find in our surveys that 8 in 10 American adults have access to the Internet. But Internet access varies by age, education, income level, and now we know by health status. Um, what we find is that, again, 81% of healthy adults in the U.S. go online. 62% uh, of those living with a chronic disease go online. And when I say chronic disease, um, I mean the five that we included in this survey, and that includes heart disease, lung conditions, high blood pressure, diabetes, and cancer. What we also find in our survey data is that patients are listening to each other. They are uh, participating in the online conversation. Um, in this new chronic disease report, which we recently released, we found that internet users living with chronic disease are actually more likely than other people to look, for example, for pharmaceutical and uh, over-the-counter drug information online. Um, another really key point is uh, that 93% of people living with chronic illness uh, consult a health professional for medical advice. Um, there is still uh, this notion that um, the internet is replacing doctors, that doctors should be afraid of the internet's influence. That is really not the case. It's time to move the conversation past that. The internet is a supplement. Yes, it is changing our relationship to information, which can change people's relationship with health professionals, um, but it really is time to Evolve the conversation. Part of the evolution is starting to see patients and people who love them uh, not as your target audience, but as your colleagues. If you are able to harness the untapped resource that is in patient knowledge, in caregiver knowledge, they will actually help you innovate in the right direction. And what our data shows is that people are ready. People are ready to do this with you. What we find is that 57% of e-patients living with a chronic disease um, consume user-generated content. They're looking at hospital reviews and doctor reviews. They are um, putting up blog posts about their experience. Um, and what I've been thinking about is that, again, we need to evolve into um, what's going to be the higher form of Health 2.0. Um, and I started thinking about how, you know, as we, and this is actually, um, a picture um, from the Galapagos Islands of a, of a turtle track. Um, she crawled out and laid her eggs uh, and then crawled back out into the sea. And um, what I challenge you to do is as we sort of crawl out of the primordial soup that was the first decade of Health 2.0, think about what kind of creature you want to be. Do you want to walk on land? Do you want to fly in the air? Do you want to swim in the sea? And I would argue that we actually have two archetypes of patient communities on stage today. Um, we have uh, ACOR, which is email-based, listserv for cancer patients. It's, it's really free text. They uh, tell their own story in their own words. Patients like me um, is another archetype. They have the opportunity to tell their own story in forums, but really it's a, it's a way to codify um, 
observations of daily living, what their symptoms are, and what their treatments are. And so I think what our challenge is, is do we allow, continue to allow the evolution towards narrative or towards an evolution of data and codification and looking for patterns? Um, essentially, in this new report, we find that the deck is stacked against people living with chronic disease. They are older, they're less educated, they are living in lower income households. But if they can get online, they have